Hello dear students. Let's continue our discussion on types of grammars. We were learning about Chomsky's hierarchy and we saw in the previous video type 0 grammar. Now let's proceed with type 1 grammar. And type 1 grammar as written over here is called as context free grammar or CFG. Now, to learn what is CFG, rather we have already learnt it and we saw many examples of CFG. But let's see from the aspect of types of grammars, why this is known as type 1 grammar or how to identify whether the grammar is of type 1. Just see, we are given a grammar, some rules or some productions have been given. Okay. And all these rules have the following uh, following form all the productions have the following form the form is x derives non terminal union terminal closure i'll better write it again over here x derives x derives non terminal that is set of non terminals union terminal closure closure this is a single non terminal Single non-terminal can derive any combination, any combination of non-terminals and terminals, zero or more. Closure means zero or more. Let's try to understand what this means. Now, in this grammar, G, which is NTPS, you know grammar contains four things. What are non-terminals? Non-terminals are S, A, B. I'm not explaining, you know that. How to find out? The non-terminals are capital letters. And then what are terminals? The terminals here are A, B, C. Check this. This is A, B and C. And what are productions? P. This this third aspect, P. We have got following productions. S derives A, A, B. A derives A, A. Or A derives B. Or B derives C, B. Or B derives C. So, we have got 1. Then 2. Then this is a third production, then fourth, and then this is fifth production. Five productions we have got, or five rules. And who is the start symbol? Typically, upper left symbol, top left symbol is the start symbol. So S is the start symbol. S is the start symbol in this grammar. Now you just observe the right hand side of all the productions. The right hand side. Left hand side surely is a single non terminal, always. All left hand sides, you see, of any rule is a single non terminal. But see the right hand side. Right hand side is any union, any combination of non terminals and terminals. Like you can see here on the right hand side, you got a terminal and two non terminals. Or here you can see you got a terminal followed by a non terminal. Okay. All productions can contain any combination of non-terminal and terminal on the right hand side. On the right hand side. Just, just find out what I am talking about. Consider this grammar now. Suppose we have S derives A, A, B, B, C. Where A derives, A derives B, A or B. B derives simply D. And C derives, let's say E. Now, you just check, you just check this, this production, this rule. On the right hand side, you got any combination of terminals and non terminals. Isn't it? Correct? So, what are non terminals in this, in this grammar? S, A, B, C. These are the non terminals. And what are the terminals? A, B, D, E. Correct? Now you watch the right hand side of this, this production, this rule. This right hand side contains contains a terminal, then non-terminal, then terminal, then non-terminal, then non-terminal. So it can be any combination of non-terminal and terminal. Or even we can have epsilon on the right hand side. You see, a non-terminal can derive an epsilon straight away. And you know the closure the closure of anything 
can contain epsilon also because this is zero or more occurrences you know this asterisk is read as zero or more occurrences so all productions have the form non terminal single non terminal derives any combination of non terminals union terminal i hope you are understanding it let's take another example let's say that we have got we have got some some grammar like this just check and a is let's say b a c or d further we have b is simply simply e this is a context free grammar this is a cfg and this is not a regular grammar this is not a regular grammar because in regular grammar all productions must be of the form x derives ay or x derives a only these two types of rules can occur whereas in cfg there is no restriction on the right hand side yes that's the word restriction restriction on rhs what's the restriction in regular grammar in regular grammar rhs must be of this form ay or a it cannot be any other form the rhs i am talking about but in cfg all restrictions for the rhs have been removed it is as if that cfg says that you can write any combination of terminal and non terminal on the right hand side but notice in both cfg in both cfg and regular grammar there is still a restriction on the left hand side the left hand side can be a single non terminal so how do you talk about restrictions here restrictions just put this as follows in regular grammar in regular grammar rhs of a production of a production is restricted is restricted to either ay or a correct and and lhs of a production is restricted restricted to single single non terminal i'll write in short nt so it can be x derives ay or it can be x derives a but in cfg context free grammar what do you have rhs has no restriction rhs has no restriction because rhs can contain can contain any combination correct it can contain any combination even epsilon it can rhs can be epsilon also any combination of non terminal union terminal so that's why we write closure of this but still lhs restriction is there even in cfg lhs can be a single and only one non terminal so all the left hand sides you will see all the left hand sides are still are still single non terminal but there is no restriction on the right hand side are you becoming aware that as you go upper in the stack as you go upper and upper see as you reach the top as you reach the top the restrictions will be removed that's why type 3 grammar which we have not yet seen but you see is called as or that grammar the type of grammar is called unrestricted grammar so you'll see all the all the restrictions are removed over here but then as you move from type 1 grammar to type 2 grammar you will see type 2 grammar is known as context sensitive grammar here some more restrictions will be removed but then some restrictions will be there and type 3 is all restrictions are removed that's why it is known as unrestricted grammar i hope you are understanding how to make out whether a grammar is regular or context free now if a grammar is context free that is type 1 then the type of language generated by them is called as context free language whereas a regular grammar generates a regular language and the kind of machine that that you will use to implement these problems is called push down automata but the kind of machines that you will use to implement regular language or to solve these kind of problems is called finite state machine as we saw in the earlier video dfa or nfa we call them but here we will require a powerful machine called push down automata to solve these kind of problems 
I hope you have understood difference between CFG and regular grammar. More about this in next video. Thank you very much.